friends. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Lindsay Thurston. I'm a decor stylist and teacher here to help you create a home you love on a budget. In today's video, we're diving into a bold yet calming, historical yet modern design style that's sure to catch your eye, French modern. Let me know what you think of this one or which design styles you would like to see featured next down below in the comments. Let's get into it. So have you been noticing some of those super ornate architectural detail molding up the gills, baseboards, crown molding, chair rail molding, French style molding all over, and then that juxtaposition against super modern, super clean lines, very simple and aesthetic furnishings. That, my friends, might be the French modern design style. French modern is considered an eclectic design style because it marries two dissimilar design aesthetics. French modern takes the grandeur of classic French interior design and marries it with the simplicity of modern minimalism. Classic French interior design is one of the most universally recognized and celebrated design styles throughout many centuries. It is one of the most famous and universally admired design styles worldwide of all time. Many people consider classic French molding, for example, to be completely classic and historical in nature. And within French style, there's a lot to learn about. From Baroque to Rococo to Empire style, you've got this sort of evolving sea of change within the French design aesthetic over time. A lot of us think of that sort of classic Parisian apartment full of all those fascinating moldings, high ceilings, French doors, that's where that name comes from of course, fantastic original floors, often in a chevron pattern, just a lot of architectural detail that makes this space stimulating even before you design it. It balances that grand Versailles with the simplicity of modern design. Don't get me wrong, it's definitely grand, but it's casual and effortless at the same time. Now that we're on the same page about what we're talking about, let's dive into the key elements of this style. If this is something that you're pursuing in your home, it might be a little overwhelming or even feel impossible if you don't have the kind of natural architectural detailing that you would find in a traditional Parisian apartment. Let's start with the color palette, something you can start influencing in your home right now. Start with a base of bright white. Usually you'll find bright white walls to kind of ground the space and give it a bright feel overall. This can also make a space feel taller even if you have low ceilings. Then start layering in some light toned, warm toned neutrals. You can even play around with some grays and some beige tones to give it a layered effect. Now create some contrast by adding some bold black or other similar dark bold color. Using bold black strategically can really add an architectural element even if none exists. Now it's time to add in maybe a little hint of color here and there. Try starting out with some muted, dingy, sophisticated tones. We've been talking about this new teal. If you really want to go bold, try an accent of a jewel tone, like an amethyst, ruby, or emerald. Don't go overboard. Use it sparingly. Generally speaking, we want to keep the base neutral and add little hints of interest here and there through color and texture. Next up, you know I'm going to say it, wall moldings. This is a huge factor. It's going to take a space from feeling like it could be anywhere to feeling that French vibe that we're craving with French modern. Adding Baroque, Rococo, or even neoclassical style molding can completely transform a space. Call me a history of interior design dork, but I just love researching this kind of stuff. It's really fun to learn more about the specific Baroque style moldings versus the Rococo style, how they tend to overlap in some regards, and then the shift into neoclassical style. Oh, I could do that all day, you guys. It is so much fun. I'm gonna link a few of my favorite articles that I found while researching for this video down below in case you're a nerd like me and you wanna learn all the details. <laughs> Start out by doing what I just said, research. Collect a ton of information, a ton of examples, I started collecting a bunch of images for this project on my Pinterest page. I started a brand new page where I can share a lot of different pins and ideas with you related to different videos and projects in our home. So you might want to wander over to pinterest.com slash Lindsay Living. I'll link it down below as well. You can follow me there and find inspiration related to the videos I share here. When adding molding, you don't have to go overboard. 
forward, you don't have to start pricing out doing molding in every single room to get this look. In fact, I would really suggest choosing one room in your home to go full on with the molding if that's something that you're craving. Try out the project, see how it goes, measure it out, practice it with painter's tape, live with it for a minute, get some people, experts in your life or at your local hardware store to help you and you can even hire a contractor to install it if that intimidates you or if you don't have the necessary tools. But I must say, if you want to invest in some tools like we've done, you can save a lot of money and learn some new skills if you are interested in trying to install it yourself. Add crown molding, really tall baseboards with a little bit of trim at the top. The moldings can be ornate and beautiful or simple, it's really up to you. If you want to do those paneled sections throughout the wall spaces, just really look at your inspiration photos and try to narrow it down to one photo that you're responding the most to that you just love, whether that's historical, like from a palace in France as your inspiration, or maybe it's from another DIYer that you found that created something beautiful. But make sure that you've got a great idea in your head to base everything off of before you go haywire with a bunch of wood trim. All of this molding provides an elaborate backdrop up for the simplicity of your modern furniture with clean lines. If you have existing architectural details, don't remove them. Coffered ceilings, trade ceilings can all play into this design aesthetic. If you have beams, you can paint them out white. If you have wood paneling like beadboard or a board and batten wall, those might lean a little bit more farmhouse and away from the French design aesthetic. You can find molding at even your local Home Depot, Lowe's, or other local hardware store. I definitely suggest the Supporting small business hardware stores. They're seem to be fewer and fewer across the country and I always try to go out of my way to support them when I can. I'm certainly no expert and I've not installed these myself but I will tell you I am considering it in our home in a few different strategic places not across the home just in a couple places. I'll definitely share those projects with you if you guys would like so let me know down in the comments if you would like me to show you how we figure that out once we get there. That's probably down the line maybe next summer. <laughs> next up fireplace. You know Oh, this was gonna come up. When we visited Versailles, one of the things that struck me was the elaborate fireplaces, plural, in every room of the place. But if you think about it, traditional French design comes from centuries and centuries ago. A lot of the apartments in Paris were built in the 17 to 1800s. So when you think about it, high ceilings were before air conditioning. So that was how you got the heat to rise. And fireplaces in every room were pretty much necessary to heat a space. All of these historic historical references played into the interior design of that time and of course now we value these things for their design aesthetic not just their functionality but of course the French were no strangers to preferring design aesthetic over functionality fashion over function <laughs> Usually made of natural stone or wood, these elaborate fireplace facades are a key element to this design style. They can add an element of bold contrast to a room if they're in a black marble with some significant veining or have elaborate carvings on them that just draw your attention. They can also provide a little texture. If all of the walls are that bright white base that we were talking about, a white marble with minimal veining or a white painted wood, for example, would just kind of recede into the background and add a a little bit of texture and history without that contrast element. Maybe then the contrast element comes from somewhere else. We'll talk about that in a minute. Feel free to accessorize with a pair of antique brass wall sconces and or a French style vintage arched mirror. You've undoubtedly seen those everywhere lately. A lot of people use the oversized ones leaning on the wall for their perfect selfie, but I almost prefer the ones that are set above a fireplace, just adding height, dimension, and again, a little bit more architectural interest in a room that might not have some naturally. Now let's talk flooring, a key element in any interior design. Generally speaking, we're looking for natural wood, hardwood that was original to a space, or maybe if you're putting in new wood into your home, you might look for something that has more of a worn in, rustic vibe to give it that I've been here forever feeling. Most of the time you're gonna see natural wood, but I'm a big believer in going for durable wood, alternative 
it is, especially when they're more affordable and again, durable for pets and children and life. A lot of times in these French apartments, you'll see they have set the hardwood on a chevron pattern. Everyone has different feelings on that. Let me know down in the comments, do you like that chevron wood pattern or do you just like traditional planking? What's your call? What would you do in your home? And if you have that chevron, do you love it? I wanna know. I've always been curious if people love it after they install it or if they ever regret it. So let us know. <laughs> Another option for flooring, a bold stone tile harlequin pattern. This is that checkerboard print, a bold contrast between a light tone stone and a darker stone set on an angle in what's called a harlequin pattern. This is super classic French design. You'll see this all over Paris if you go. Tons of the floors in the Palace of Versailles and countless other sites across the city of Paris have these floors. It's an element that's gonna quickly take your space into that French zone that you're craving. It's all about the contrast, baby. Now that we've gone through everything from color palette to wall moldings, flooring options, I think it's time to talk furnishings. Here we're working with a mix of old and new. So if you're into that eclectic vibe, that's where the French modern style might hit your fun bone. Not your funny bone, your fun bone. Is that a thing? Selecting furniture and decor are where things can often get tricky. There are so many options out there, so many retailers, that it can be overwhelming. It doesn't matter what your design style is, everyone goes through that. It can be especially true when you're trying to balance style, history, modern, interesting, and stay under a budget. If you want to nail that traditional Parisian apartment French vibe, then you're going to want to work hard to curate that perfect collection of historical and modern, old and new. Look for antiques that showcase historical details and then place them alongside something super modern, clean lines, bold contrast, interesting geometry. It's really that mix that creates the magic of French modern. Simplistic forms with clean lines and geometric shapes paired with ornate, rich, historical, ooh, I just love it. Maybe it's taking an old world piece of furniture and upholstering it in a fresh, neutral linen for today. Maybe it's a classic French provincial settee alongside a super modern, travertine, angular, chunky leg coffee table. It's balancing ornate molding with bold abstract art pieces. The visual interest in French modern spaces lies in that juxtaposition of old and new and the contrast of light and dark. So play with these things, have fun with them. Now that we've got a sense of the key elements, it's time to talk about the philosophies of designing a space this way. Although French modern draws inspiration from highly adorned French classical architecture and interior design, this design style should not be overly fussy or formal. Quite the contrary, actually. It should be functional, lived in, casual, and comfortable. Feel free to be spontaneous. Rearrange furniture. Put things together that don't seem to go together. Try new things. I think that's that sort of model modern element, just fearlessly trying things, moving things around, being comfortable with negative space. Maybe it's an off-center piece of art or something that feels too small for a space. That's kind of where we're playing with these design rules and just having fun with it. That leads me into the next design philosophy, be playful. Nothing can be too arranged and stable. I tried to assemble things that shouldn't be together in the first place, creating awkward juxtapositions. I love this quote from French modern designer Jean-Louis Denis. Jean-Louis Denier. And I'll be linking his website down below along with the websites of two other French design houses that I'm absolutely in love with and I'm drawing a ton of inspiration just looking through their galleries. The last design philosophy I have mentioned here before in reference to other design styles and my goals for our home in 2021, fewer, better things. The French modern design aesthetic is not about temporary, it is about sustainable and long-term. Think about it. It's all about referencing and paying homage to historical, designs, so it should not be ephemeral in nature, even though it's adding some modern elements. Focus on quality over quantity when adding decor pieces. Save for new key pieces. Don't just buy throwaway furniture if you can avoid it. Or if you are working with a limited budget, like most people, then source things secondhand. See if you can find super high quality design pieces that are either that more modern or that more French historicals, and then put them together. See what you can do with the mix. Three French modern designs design houses that I'm absolutely in love with and have been drawing so much inspiration from. Probably the most well-known French designer that I've come across, Jean-Louis Denois. Jean-Louis Denier. 
I'm gonna be linking his website down below. He's got a beautiful gallery full of spaces that are that hallmark French modern aesthetic. I find his work fascinating. The next one is, I'm gonna say this wrong, Gilles Boissier. They are a design team, contrast, leaning into that modern aesthetic really hard. And last, Joseph Durand. These are a little more like modern leaning, but you're really gonna see that mix of old and new, which make his spaces really unique. Now, final question, is this style for you? Definitely let me know what you're thinking in the comments, but here's my prediction. If you love a mix of French history and modern minimalism, then this is definitely going to be the design style for you. If you like that sort of challenge of creating an eclectic space where you're mixing things and trying to find that perfect curated balance that pleases your eye, this might be a style that you're into. This is not gonna be the style for you if you prefer to keep your aesthetic completely minimal and modern, that ornate detailing of the French element here is just going to distract you from your goals. If the idea of mixing design styles like this makes you feel stressed, if it kind of fills you with anxiety to find the perfect curated mix of old and new, run away from this one. You do not have to go eclectic if that freaks you out. The design process should be fun, so make sure you're choosing a design aesthetic that not only appeals to you visually, but is something that you enjoy so much that it makes all those tough DIY projects, the long, many months sourcing these furniture pieces, or all the time and effort and money it takes for spendy additions worth it in the end. As always, these are my opinions, so don't forget to leave yours in the comments down below. Let me know which design style you'd like to see featured next. I'll be serving up the next episode of How to Decorate in two weeks. Like and subscribe for more interior design and home decor tips. Next, you'll want to watch the video that started this series, How to Decorate Japandi. I'll also link this video of my reaction to Cara Delevingne's house tour with Architectural Digest. You will not believe this home. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye, my friends. I'm really interested to see if I can integrate a little bit of that vibe without going overboard.